Right after their loss against C9, Fnatic now face themselves against Korean Titans T1 for their second game of three in their decider day in groups. They haven't had much time to recover from the previous loss, and now they're suddenly put in a situation with a lot of pressure as they've suddenly faced a much tougher opponent and one that'll really make them work for this win if they deserve it. This means that phases like draft are even more important to ensure that they can get as much leverage as possible before they hop in a game. As always, if you enjoy the content like this, feel free to drop a sub to support the channel. Let's hop in a draft. Starting the bans, T1 find themselves on blue side and go for very targeted bans here, with Azir, Victor, and Renata. Fnatic's bans are more standard, aiming for the Caitlyn, Aatrox, and Fiora here. This means that Yumi's up, and T1 do not hesitate to take that at all. Both Maokai and Sejuani are also available here, so expect to have those two traded at some point in this first phase. Fnatic initiate this trade by taking the Maokai first, as well as swinging for the Lucian here. T1's picks are pretty much mandatory here, as they quickly pair the server with the Yumi and take Sejuani to round out their first three. Fnatic pretty much do the same, taking Nami to pair with the Lucian, and we've got ourselves a pretty standard first phase of picks and bans. One Meatball Champion, and two very different bottom lanes on each side. T1 is going to be looking for a source of strength on top side here, while Fnatic's pretty much the opposite. Their bot side is their advantage, so it's just about how hard T1 can punish Fnatic on this top side pick with their B4, B5 since the advantage bot side right now for Fnatic is pretty much undeniable. With both Victor and Azir out the window as well, this means that there's a pretty low chance that control mages will be available in the mid lane, at least optimally. The bans clearly show that Fnatic want to clear the way as much as possible for this weak side top for Wonder, while T1's bans actually attack it, as well as remove the LeBlanc as a potential mid lane blind. And that also paves the way for a good R5. Fnatic start the second phase off with a Nikali pick, meaning that they're going to be playing much more forward and have to force themselves onto a much more aggressive and less control style than what they are used to. There's no control mage to help create space for them, so it's really on them to adapt to this differing style and take that space when necessary. From what I see in both team but from what I see in both T1's capabilities as a team though, and the champions that they have right now, it's really on them to choose the amount to which they'll expose themselves and give up space, and especially if they manage to minimize the damage on bottom side in the early to mid, they have enough tools to really curb this attempt from Fnatic. Surprisingly, T1 actually obliged for this forward style and go for picks they trust their own players in, with the Silas to mash into the Akali and actually a blind Yone to boot. This to me is actually a super smart read from T1 because of the current state of the draft. We've already established that Fnatic are heavily incentivized to invest their resources into bot side, so they know that Fnatic pretty much have to weak side top and pick reserve champions so that they aren't pulled on both sides of the map. T1 are also aware of this and actually blind a champion that is otherwise not allowed to be blinded in this situation. The main counters to a champion like Yone in the top lane are champions that require resources like Aurelia or Jax, but because of what I've just mentioned, T1 know that those picks aren't really possible right now, so this is a rare occasion in which a pick like Yone top is allowed in a blind slot. It basically allows T1 to scrounge themselves a winning topside matchup because they were so sharp to notice this opportunity, and it adds cohesion to the comp. With not much room to really adapt at this point though, Fnatic opt to remove Maokai top and then put Poppy in the jungle as their last pick. I actually think this Poppy pick is very weak into T1's comp because this champion cannot really stop much of what T1 is trying to do anyway. Their draft is not in the greatest spot right now, not that they expose themselves like this, but they need a champion that either has a lockdown or agency to give them a better early game, which essentially achieves the same thing. Champions like Trundle or J4 would have been good to play here, playing better into the aggression that Fnatic were looking for. Although Fnatic have good starts to their drafts overall, I think teams are slowly figuring out their overall style of play. And it's showing up now when it matters most. Both comps are still relatively cohesive, and a lot is up to skill succession from players on both sides, especially on mid lane, but T1 have a comp that have more options and less pressure to perform in the early game per se, and they've got more overall flexibility in fights to play around. T1 have ticking time bombs in both top and bottom side, and they don't have the room to play as slowly as they normally do. Personally, I think it would be very hard for them to punish a team like T1 on this as well, and because of these factors, I actually rate the draft 60-40 in favor of T1. As always though, hope this analysis was insightful to you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay fresh.